Here's a few parts that may fail on your 4.6 V8. Stay tuned, baby. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please excuse my dirty engine bay, but what you are looking at is a 4.6 single overhead cam V8 motor. This is a police interceptor. Um, everything with the motor is stock. Give y'all a look around. Now the most common problems with this V8 motor is the intake manifold. So I'm gonna take this cover off here so you guys can take a look at the intake manifold that I have on now. So with the cover taken off, we have access to the top of the intake manifold as you guys can see here, the throttle body, fuel rail, coil packs, fuel injectors and a bunch of other things but the main thing and the main problem with these crown vicks is they come with a cheap intake manifold which is this part here if you guys didn't know also is all of this in the front so it comes with a plastic thermostat housing which is this whole bar here that wraps around and they tend to leak a lot they tend to leak at these seals here sometime at the top where your thermostat goes on the top at right there and uh that causes a problem and also those codes that saying um running too lean or running too rich or basically you're getting uh uh unaccounted air into your system so mine was throwing codes saying that i got a catalytic converter bank one bank two uh running lean and running rich and my intake manifold was the problem the whole time it was the gaskets that was going bad the plastics was melting even though that i kept cooling in my in my um in my radiator and my reservoir at all times um it still ran a problem and a lot of other guys that have these crown vicks one of my friends is actually having the same problem now so all you guys got to do is go to autozone or if you can find it online if i were you guys i would get a lifetime warranty intake manifold so that if anything goes wrong with it again you can just take your old intake manifold off uh, return it and get a new one right there on the spot if they have any in stock or just wait a couple of days until they can get one in stock but I got a lifetime warranty on this intake manifold and man I actually saved a lot of money because I want to say this is my second or third one with this vehicle of having to replace and uh, the first uh one or two that i replaced i replaced it with the same old one that had the plastic uh thermostat front which this has uh uh an aluminum and uh i ran into the same problem but ever since i had that aluminum front on i haven't had any coolant leaks or uh any gaskets going bad or any uh unaccounted for air coming into the system that that mass airflow sensor can't pick up so if you guys are ever running into those codes with the catalytic converter or misfire on one of your cylinders you might want to try looking at your intake manifold make sure you don't have any leaks of uh, air leaks or anything like that because that will throw those codes uh, the whole system is basically mapped together so one code would throw another and then it'll throw another one and it'll just make the whole system act like that something's wrong so even after I replaced my catalytic converters, that wasn't the problem. When I replaced this intake manifold, that was the problem the whole time. All of those codes went away. I no longer have a check engine light on the vehicle. So this car has about 225,000 miles on it. The motor probably has about 100,000 miles. This is another motor from a uh, junked Crown Vic in the junkyard that only had, I wanna say, believe 75,000 miles on it at the time. Um, so this is a completely different motor. It's not the same serial number motor that came in the car. As you guys can see, there's a sticker down there with like a lot of like graffiti writing or whatever. And anyway, um, I did get that one out of a salvage yard. And another thing that I had a problem with after about 175,000 miles to about 200,000 miles is the radiator fan. 
You guys are gonna also want to replace your radiator fan. Make sure that you don't have any cracks. Make sure that it's still running um, properly. Make sure that it's running when it needs to run. Uh, this is a very vital asset to the car to keep your radiator cool, to keep the whole system cool. Um, I had to replace mine at 215,000 miles. You guys can check out the video in the link below. Uh, I will post that of me replacing the radiator fan. Uh, I believe I either replaced this first and then that second or vice versa. But yeah, those was the two main problems that I have with this Crown Vic. I've owned multiple Crown Vics. So guys, uh, this don't have anything to do with having rims or anything on the car. I do not dog the car. I do not run the car hard. So these are just normal wear and tear items that you need to look out for. Uh, the same problems that I had with this one is the same problems that I had with my previous Crown Vicks that didn't have any rims on it was the intake manifold and this fan here. A lot of guys tend to want to change out the cold air intake and run a K&N or a Spectre or any other brand uh, cold air intake system on the car. That's fine. Sometimes it robs power from the car because it's not made for it. This box, um, I've actually had a cold air intake on the car and I felt like the, the car was a lot slower. Uh, yeah, it had a little bit more throttle response, but uh, as far as torque or the car running like I was supposed to, I had a problem with that. Um, some guys say that you may have to just get a tune with it, but if I were you guys, I would run with the factory engineered system. This thing has a hose that run in the front that's right behind the headlight here that runs to this box and gives it the cold air that it needs. And a lot of the coned cold air intake systems, it has an opening here. So you're basically drawing in a lot more heat than uh, expected. You think that you're getting a lot more airflow. You might be, but you aren't getting that cool air that your car needs. So I wouldn't advise running a cold air intake uh, now the uh, the K and N air filters actually give you about four to five horsepower, maybe like three torque or something like that. Uh, it's not going to be as noticeable, but it does make a big difference as far as gas mileage and things like that. Uh, I am running a cold air, um, no, not a cold air, a K and N air filter in this box here, and I can definitely tell a little difference, a little bit more throttle response. Uh, so I haven't had a problem with my factory system, but I did have a problem with running a full cold air intake system before so I wouldn't advise doing that Another mechanical failure that may go on your Crown Vic is your water pump Which is located behind this pulley here It's very easy to take the water pump out and replace it with a new one The only thing you need to do is put a ratchet or um, a square head in here Pull back off of your uh, tensioner belt. Take off your belt. Make sure that you remember how your belt is looped around all of your pulleys so that you can put it back exactly how you've taken it off. And you're going to want to take these four bolts out of this pulley here. Sometimes this pulley tends to go bad and you'll see like a, um, like a little minor shaking in the front. Sometimes this pulley will go bad. You may have to replace that. I believe this is my second pulley. And I did replace this along with my water pump. Now the water pump is right behind this pulley and it's five accessible bolts. You don't have to do anything extra to take this water pump out. It's five assess accessible bolts that's right behind this pulley. And you can just pull your water pump out, put a new one in, you uh, put another pulley on the front of it and tighten everything down and then just put your belt back around it. So this is my second pulley and my second water pump that I did have to add. To this car with 225,000 miles on it which I know I did tell you guys that this is another motor that is put in this car but I had uh, to replace the one on the motor that actually came in the car before also that was um, another mechanical failure like I said which is this water pump here another part that 4.6 V8 owners tend to have is this EGR valve here there's two bolts that connects and there's also a connector back here that you will spin back to take this EGR valve off uh, A lot of guys that I spoke to tend to have a problem with that I've yet to have a problem with mine But sometimes the sensor on it goes bad and it's a very cheap part to replace 
a lot of this stuff on this car is cheap and accessible to replace that's the reason why i'm in love with this 4.6 v8 and i don't think that i want to go with anything else guys other than this 4.6 this 4.6 is bulletproof um as long as you do all of the maintenance on it that's required and you replace some of the cheaper parts that 410 have slapped on here stock and you replace that with something that they uh have today um as far as a stronger part with better gaskets um and things of that nature and made of better materials such as this aluminum here instead of just all plastic i may want to go with an aluminum intake a full aluminum intake so i know i won't have any kind of cracks or anything in it as time goes on but as of now i did replace it with a a lot better one as i was telling you guys before some guys may also have a problem with the alternator if you're running uh, any kind of speakers in your car uh sometimes the alternator just goes out this alternator is very easy to replace there's a bracket on the top you take that bracket off uh there's two bolts down here you have to loosen up your belt tensioner to get the belt off in that and you can replace your alternator with ease also but yeah guys that'll wrap it up with the main problems that these 4.6 motors give which is not really a big deal all of these parts are very cheap and they will be very reliable once they are replaced um anything with any vehicles have problems and parts have to be replaced but other than that guys these motors are bulletproof i've yet to have a major failure um with this engine i've yet to have one now some guys have problems with their transmissions also i did rebuild mine put stronger gears in it um i believe another torque converter um i have to look at the paperwork but i did pay for a lot of stuff to get beefed up with my transmission so it is able to pull these rims with no problem but uh, when I first got this car from uh, the state trooper station, it did have a problem with the transmission. The transmission didn't want to shift in the second. It just wanted to stay in first gear. So ever since then, I've just changed a lot of stuff with the transmission, beef your gears, torque converter, things like that. And I've yet to have a problem with this car. Sometimes I do some little minor pulls, but you know, I'm already rolling. I'm not sitting in place and then just nailing it to try to tear stuff up. So. Uh, other than that guys those are the major problems that these cars tend to have over time which they are not major at all but those are the key components that tends to fail on these 4.6 motors and i basically gave you guys step by step on how to replace them and it is very easy and very accessible a lot of guys want me to put a whole nother engine in here uh i don't want to do that i'm gonna stick with this 4.6 and I'm just gonna add enough power to where this 4.6 can handle it and it won't tear anything up. So maybe a pro charger that's uh, a lower stage so that this car can handle just that enough boost that I can squeeze almost about all the power that this motor would give me without tearing any major components up. So as you guys can also see, this is cut out and ready, man. So a lot of heat is extracted out of there. Um, sometimes in the cold, when I'm driving the car, I can just see the heat coming out of there and it actually heats my windshield up and kind of defrosts it. So it's pretty cool to see that, man. You can just see the stuff like evapping up out of the hood. So yes, the hood is functional. I may get a lot more cut out and then brace it. So I may just go ahead and cut the whole uh, square out and then put a brace in there so that my hood don't collapse on itself. But other than that, guys, I do have a lot of content coming this year. I plan on start working again soon and getting those funds together so that we can tackle a lot of projects with this car. I do have another car that I want to buy and that I will be buying this year, guys, that is going to be a killer on this channel. It's faster than a Dodge Charger. It's faster than a lot of cars. So if you guys just do your research, just look at what was the fastest car back in like 2003 to 2006 because those are the three years that they made the car so if you guys check that out then you may know what kind of car that i'm bringing to the channel guys it is a crusher uh, the car has great reviews it's very reliable maintenance is almost just like this 4.6 except for it's a little bit more complicated so 
I'm gonna have to dive into that and do my homework before I actually start tearing that car down and building a freaking monster. So yeah, man, y'all stay tuned to the channel, man. Two Time Moto TV out. And if you have any questions, drop them below. Make sure y'all smash that like button so that this video can get recommended, guys. I appreciate y'all, love y'all, and have a blessed day. Peace.